What is your all-time most embarrassing moment? Story 1. In my second year of high school, I had a huge crush on a girl from my class. Although we'd exchanged a few words, we weren't exactly close. It happened to be around Valentine's Day, and our school had this gig where, for $10, student volunteers would serenade someone with a song of their choice, accompanied by a card in their class. Instead of taking the normal route and asking her out directly, I opted for the singing Valentine. I gave my $10, signed up, and started feeling increasingly jittery about the approaching day. Later that day, I told everything to my friend, and he laughed. It wasn't just a chuckle. It was a full-blown laughing fit. Finally, amidst his amusement, he revealed that the girl had a senior boyfriend, making my move really foolish. The next morning, I confessed to another friend involved in the program. After he finished laughing, he regretfully informed me it was too late. The singing assignments were already sorted. I clung to a sliver of hope that due to limited singers and time constraints, they might not get me. Sometimes that happened, and you'd get your $10 refunded, sparing you from public embarrassment. So our shared class rolled around in the one I had sent the valentine to, and I was glued to the clock. A few others received their singing valentines, but with about 10 minutes remaining. Mine hadn't shown up. Then the door swung open. Instead of the usual single person with a boombox, there were three. One among them was the guy I had pleaded with to cancel it, and he sported the broadest grin as they set up. The song options had been pretty limited. Back then, streaming wasn't a thing, so it was all about what CDs they happened to have. I barely knew most of the songs and wasn't in the mood for anything mushy, so I settled on the one higher tempo tune I knew, Wild Thing. When they announced who the Valentine was for, she blushed, probably assuming it was from her boyfriend. As they began singing, her blush deepened. They handed her the card with my name on it, and her face went from pink to fiery red. She glanced over at me, and all I could manage was a shrug. After they left, she blurted out, But Chewy, I have a boyfriend. And that's when everyone caught on it was from me. I just muttered that I had figured things out too late, wished her a happy Valentine's Day, and apologized. That moment stands as the most embarrassed I've ever been. The universe was definitely not on his side that day. Story 2 In high school, the homecoming dance was approaching. I happened to confide in a girl from my math class about my crush and a popular girl. Unbeknownst to me, they were close friends, and this girl offered to put in a good word for me. The next day, she assured me that my crush would definitely say yes if I asked her out. So between periods, I spotted my crush in the hallway, summoned the courage, and popped the question for homecoming. To my delight, she said yes. Booyah! Fast forward to Thursday, two days before homecoming, my crush, her friend, and I grabbed lunch together, and I thought I could win her over by offering to foot the bill. Yes, my strategy wasn't the best. She listed her order. Two bags of chips, a burger with fries, and a small carton of chocolate milk. No problem. I strutted to the cafeteria and grabbed those items like a pro. Then for some reason, I decided to jog back to her, even though it only saved me about 10 seconds. Picture this. I had two bags of chips in my mouth, a burger and fries in one hand, and a carton of chocolate milk in the other. The girls were chilling in the common area, which had carpeted flooring, right next to the tiled cafeteria. These spaces were divided by a small metal line on the floor. As fate would have it, just as I reached that line, my left foot snagged on the metal. No biggie, I thought. I'll just swiftly swing my other foot forward to save the situation. But alas, that foot got caught too. I found myself tumbling forward, instinctively trying to break my fall with my hands. Here's where things take a nosedive. One hand gripped on a carton of chocolate milk, which immediately burst open, splattering chocolatey goodness everywhere. Meanwhile, the other hand failed me too. It slipped on the burger inside its bag, and the fries scattered in all directions. And then, my face became the ultimate landing spot, graced by two bags of Lay's potato chips in my mouth. You know those jokes about Lay being mostly air? Turns out, they're true. As my face met the ground, both bags exploded simultaneously, sounding like a gunshot. Somehow, one of my shoes even decided to take flight. In that awkward moment, I wished I could blend into the floor and disappear. But alas, I had chocolate milk and a chip-soaked face to lift off the ground. And here's the kicker. This hilarious spectacle unfolded at the meeting point between the common room and the cafeteria. So every single person in both places either witnessed or heard of this disaster. About a hundred students, all dead silent for a couple of heartbeats. And then it hit them, the laughter. Oh boy, the laughter was deafening, like a jet engine. 
Each person there was chuckling as if it was the funniest thing they'd ever witnessed. I spotted the janitor doubled over and clutching a mop handle for support in fits of laughter. Even a teacher attempted to walk over to assist me, but kept stopping to convulse with laughter every few steps. And guess what? All of this unfolded a mere 10 feet from where my crush and her friend were sitting. Everyone was hysterical, but my crush? She took the cake for the most uproarious laughter. She had collapsed to the floor, one hand clutching her ribs, the other braced on her knee, laughing so intensely that not a sound came out, wheezing like an asthmatic dolphin. There's no bouncing back from that catastrophe. I trudged to the bathroom to try and salvage what's left of my dignity. Along the way, the teacher could only manage to hand me back my shoe amidst continuous laughter. Inside the bathroom, the laughter echoing in my head felt like an eternity. When the bell finally rang, I was still in the bathroom, and the laughter hadn't subsided. As I spent the entire day wallowing in what was undoubtedly the most mortifying moment of my life, a thought crept in. Maybe I could be the funny guy now, and she might like that. The next morning before class, I ran into my crush. She approaches me and casually mentions, So, homecoming is tomorrow. Desperate to avoid the disaster of yesterday, I enthusiastically reply, Yes, yes it is. Then comes the blow, crisp and clear. So this guy I actually liked asked me to the dance. I'm going with him. My response? A feeble, ah, yeah, that makes sense. Of course, I definitely did not retreat to the bathroom to shed a few tears after that. Story 3 On my 21st birthday night, I found myself in Vegas with my mom, older sister, and her husband. Technically, I had just turned 21 a few minutes prior. And after catching a show, we strolled into the nearest bar to the theater, which turned out to be a loud, bustling, jingle-themed spot called Kahunaville. My family marched up to the bartender, pointing proudly at me while announcing that it was my 21st birthday, expecting some kind of special treatment. But instead of a warm reception, the bartender simply took our drink orders without a word. We were put off, but we could at least have my first legal drink and then move to a more welcoming place. After a bit, everyone else had their drinks, but mine was missing. Suddenly, the bartender hops onto the bar top with a microphone and commands the attention of the whole packed bar. Excuse me, everyone. It's this young lady's 21st birthday. He announces, pointing straight at me. The entire bar erupts into celebration. It was super embarrassing. At least that's what I initially thought. Until the bartender decides to take a seat on the bar, perched with his feet on two bar stools facing me. He then turns around, revealing a huge drink in a massive hurricane glass, complete with a long banana sticking out of the top. And nope, there was definitely no straw in sight. Perched on the bar, legs spread, the bartender places this attention-grabbing drink between his legs and, before the packed crowd, challenges me to take a drink without using my hands. Now, I'm all for a good time, and the whole bar is egging me on, but here's the kicker. My mother is just a couple of feet away. I glance at my sister for guidance, and she simply shrugs, giving me the unmistakable wear in Vegas expression. Taking a deep breath, I did the challenge, hands firmly behind my back, while the bartender struck his best O face for the crowd, especially directed at my mother. We eventually left the bar, and the relief flooded in when I heard my mom shout, That was awesome! Props to that bartender for playing the part of a mischievous character, only to put on an entertaining show. And yeah, I finally got to quip. Look, Ma, no hands. It's a good thing her mom's got her back. If you thought what this girl did was awkward, just wait till you hear story eight. The girl's accident there definitely takes the cake. Story four. I attended a religious school where we had weekly church sessions. On one particularly warm and sticky day, I found myself in church wearing the school uniform shorts, sitting on a window pew. The weather had made my skin a bit clammy. As the priest delivered his homily, I shifted in my seat, and that's when it happened. The back of my sweaty legs stuck to the pew, and against the hardwood, produced the loudest fart-like noise you can imagine. It echoed throughout the church, instantly silencing everything. Every single head, including the priests, turned in my direction. A long, excruciatingly awkward silence ensued as all eyes fixed on me, and I turned crimson like never before. Surprisingly, nothing more came of it. The priest resumed his sermon, and everyone else continued looking bored. But that moment when the world paused, and all eyes were on little second-grade me after that thunderous faux pas was really mortifying. 
Story 5. As a freshman in high school playing soccer, our team faced a tough match against the league's top squad. Post-game, moms usually bring snacks and drinks for everyone. Unfortunately, our team didn't have much of a support system, so no treats were brought for us. Feeling exhausted and disheartened after the loss, I was so out of it that I ended up mistakenly tagging along with the opposite team to the snack area. They had all the goodies. Twinkies, jerkies, those fun-sized juice boxes that look like grenades, the works. Without realizing, I ate those snacks while noticing I was the lone member of my team munching away among the opponents. A deafening silence fell upon the entire field as players and their supportive parents glanced my way. That's when it hit me. Oops, uh, wrong team. Their amusement was evident as laughter erupted from the group. I immediately made my way back to my team's side of the field, where my entire squad joined in on the laughter. Yeah, definitely one of those tough days. This guy was hangry enough to sneak into enemy territory and raid their snacks. Hey, do you feel secondhand embarrassment from these stories? I bet you also have something to tell, so share them in the comments. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more funny videos. Story 6 during a recent vacation with friends and an acquaintance, we were sharing accommodations, and this person I didn't know well and I ended up with the pull-out couches. Unfortunately, his was right beside the bathroom. One night, while we were out exploring away from our hotel, my stomach started acting up. It began with unsettling rumbles. Then nausea hit me hard. I've never felt so unwell in my life. It was like my insides were being wrung out. As soon as we returned to our hotel, I dashed straight for the bathroom. Through that thin wall separating our sleeping spaces, this near stranger was subjected to a symphony of unfortunate bodily functions. I'll spare the details, but let's just say he heard everything. The remainder of the night was spent shivering in bed, making frequent trips to the bathroom. Story 7 During a play rehearsal, I had a difficult entrance down some steps that led to the stage. Each step was like a small landing, and I had to time it perfectly to include my monologue standing between the two narrators at the front of the stage. It was the final dress rehearsal, and my mom had shown up to capture the moment on video. As I made my way down those steps, I misstepped. From what I later saw on the recording, I basically vanished from view, and the audience erupted into laughter. I ended up unintentionally somersaulting my way back up to my feet, swiftly jumping back up, all the while feeling my face burn with embarrassment. I remained mortified for the rest of my approach to the stage, even though I didn't realize the full extent of my tumble until I watched the recording afterward. Strangely enough, I never paused my monologue. Not for a second. I continued delivering my lines as I fell and as I popped right back up, without missing a beat. It was incredibly embarrassing at the moment, but looking back, I found a peculiar sense of pride in managing to stay in character throughout the unexpected acrobatics. Story 8 I messed up my pants at my ex's nephew's first birthday party. We had a small gathering at a local park with pizza and cake. Being dairy intolerant, I had asked my ex to stop and get lactate before the event. He assured me we were close to bathrooms and I'd be fine if I needed to go. However, we weren't near any bathrooms. Feeling the urgent need to use the restroom, I informed my ex and we began heading towards what we thought were the restrooms, but we were actually going the wrong way. The urge became overwhelming and I couldn't hold it any longer. I ended up having an accident. He suggested I go into the ticket along the bike path to finish relieving myself while he went to fetch baby wipes from his sister. After cleaning up, I left my undies along with my pride in the thicket. I'm glad there were bushes where she could hide. At least she didn't have to do the walk of shame. Story 9 I was at an NFL game when something I had eaten earlier wreaked havoc on my stomach leaving me with absolutely terrible gas, like the kind that could clear a room. In the midst of the game, as I was climbing the stairs to my seat, I felt the urgent need to release some of that pressure. Coincidentally, at that moment, the crowd erupted into cheers, so I thought it was the perfect cover. However, what I hadn't realized was that my rear end was at the same level as a woman sitting in her seat along the aisle. Inadvertently, I let out a fart right next to her ear. As I looked back, she glanced at me with a mix of shock and disgust. Feeling incredibly embarrassed, I hurriedly turned away and scrambled up the stairs as fast as I could, trying to blend into the crowd. I still cringe thinking about that moment and how terrible it must have been for her. Sometimes I find myself pondering that memory and feeling like a complete idiot. Story 10 Ah, sophomore year in math class. 
The setting for this memorable incident. I was sandwiched between two classmates, feeling rather congested and exhausted that day. I had my head resting in my hand, hunched over my math book, when the urge to sneeze hit me. In a hasty attempt to lean back, I didn't quite move fast enough. The sneeze's force propelled my face straight into my desk. The impact was so intense that my head bounced back up like a basketball. I was left feeling dizzy and bewildered, just muttering, Ugh. Meanwhile, my two neighboring guys lost it completely. The one on the right was howling with laughter, and the one on the left had his face buried in his hands, snorting away. The teacher glanced over, utterly puzzled, and all I could manage was, I sneezed. Story 11. I was on an airplane years ago, seated with my girlfriend's parents, while my girlfriend was unfortunately seated directly behind me. In an attempt to surprise her during the flight, I extended my hand backward, aiming to place it on her knee. Slowly, I continued moving it up, thinking it was her thigh, until I heard giggling. I peered back through the seats and realized my hand was on the leg of the guy seated next to her. He caught my eye and said, I just wanted to see how far you'd go. To my surprise, my girlfriend was in on the joke and the whole row burst into laughter, including her. I felt incredibly embarrassed by the mix-up. Damn, bro. Those are the moments that make you wish there was an undo button in real life. Story 12. It was date night, and we decided to hit up a sushi joint. Decently priced, but slightly sketchy. I had this intense craving for Korean short ribs, and to my delight, the sushi spot had them on the menu. Perfect. I indulged, and it was absolutely delicious. However, on the bus ride home, my stomach started to feel uneasy. Initially just a slight rumble, but things escalated quickly. By the time we got off the bus, it was a dire situation. It was like the floodgates had opened. We were only a five-minute walk from home, but I barely made it 40 steps before disaster struck. My date, who was aware of my upset stomach, was right there when we had to admit. Oh no, it's happening. My only saving grace was finding a dark, secluded area off to the side where I could handle things privately. I waited there until my date returned with a spare pair of pants. I left the soiled pants behind. Apologies to whoever stumbled upon those. I made my date swear on something very sacred that he wouldn't breathe a word of this to anyone. We eventually parted ways, and to this day, I still wonder if he kept his promise. Story 13. At a retreat, when we were all seated on a hardwood floor, the speaker called for a moment of silence to reflect on God's word in our hearts. Unfortunately, my stomach was bothering me at that exact moment. Thinking it was a small, silent fart, I let it out slowly hoping no one would notice. However, it turned out to be an extremely loud fart, amplified by the wooden floors and the silent room. It echoed so loudly that it seemed as if my backside had split in two. Despite the moment being disrupted, it brought laughter from everyone. I owned up to it. Story 14. Near the end of my freshman year of college, my first ever boyfriend dumped me. I was devastated, but I played it really cool and acted like it was fine. We were laughing and joking as he left. As soon as the door closed behind him, I burst into tears. Not five minutes later, he knocked on my door because he had left his book bag behind. That was some mortifying stuff. Story 15. I walked face first into a streetlight lamppost because I was staring at a beautiful girl walking in the direction where I was coming from. It was in front of the main gate of our university. Hundreds of students saw it. My friends laughed hard as hell. Dude, that's pure rom-com material. Story 16. I was at my friend's high school birthday party, completely buzzed. I dashed towards a group of people and exclaimed, Watch this. Then I attempted to run and dive into a bounce house, but the Velcro-lined entrance ended up pulling my clothes down to my ankles. I'll never forget the horrified looks on their faces when I lay there, revealing all my goodies. Story 17. When I was a kid, I was watching the new Harry Potter movie, and I had this habit of putting foreign objects in my mouth. I had a thing for the taste of metal and plastic, so at that moment, I was munching on small watch batteries because the iron or something in them intrigued my taste buds. Suddenly, my mom walked in, catching me off guard, and I ended up swallowing three watch batteries whole. All I could manage to say to her was, Mom, help. I had to be rushed to the hospital because my naive self thought they'd open up in my stomach and be fatal. Story 18 if you've seen Freaks and Geeks, there's a scene where a character gets pushed out into the hallway from the locker room in the buff. That prank was pretty common in our school, but for us, it happened in the gymnasium instead. It usually occurred after P.E., when the place was mostly empty. 
But of course, when it happened to me, there were a bunch of people setting up equipment for an assembly. Being the shortest kid in my grade was tough. I was always the target. Story 19. When I was younger, my mom didn't teach me how to use a pad, and I started my period for the first time while at school. Someone asked me if I had spilled barbecue sauce on myself. Then, during a test, my pad slipped out and fell in front of everyone because I hadn't removed the wrapper. Story 20. I had a fantastic day at a water park, but in the afternoon, a woman approached me and whispered in my ear that there was an issue with my swimsuit. When I reached behind, I noticed a huge gap. The fabric was torn right in the middle, revealing my white, untanned bum crack. I had been running around like this all day, and yet no one had said anything. Oof. I bet they were too mesmerized by this Grand Canyon that their jaw literally hit the floor. If you enjoyed this video, you'll surely have more fun with what's the most embarrassing thing your kid did in public. I couldn't stop laughing at story three. See you there.